Let me define power for you. Power it is the flow of energy, the energy we've been talking about, per unit time. And we usually use P for power, and it is in, let's see, it would be in joules per second, which equals a watt. So usually use a large W for power, one watt. We've had a lot of cases of energy flow, uh, with all of our external work being done, all these cases, but a lot of them don't really lend themselves to describing power because they're not constant. So one thing that does, though, is friction, when you do work with friction. So what we're going to think about to help us think about power is simply pushing the block across the bench and the friction force that that causes. Okay, so the isolated system is going to just be the block, nothing else. So let's draw this block nice and big here. There's the block. There's the bench. And what else did we have? We had finger pointing, pushing, applying a pushing force. And let's see, we had FP on the block, which I'll kind of draw where it roughly occurs. F push on the block, and we also know that the reason we can go to constant velocity, so the block is going at V constant, because there's a balancing force back, we've talked about this before, that there's a friction force the same size that the, uh, the bench is applying to the block. So that's everything. Now, we said the isolated system is just the block, so let's sit here and draw our little isolated system barrier just like that. It's not the table. It's not the finger, just the block. Okay. And now let's think about the flows of energy, which in this case is the work, the work we're doing on this isolated system. So the external work of the hand on the block, let's calculate that. Uh, let's see, on the block it must be we have the force that we're pushing this way, and let's assume the block uh, translates some distance that I've been calling delta x, right? like that, some displacement delta x. Well, then it would just be force push times delta x, fp, times delta x, times in this case, they're in the same direction, the cosine is zero degrees, and that's just one. Right, so the work is the positive quantity, force uh, fp times delta x. We could also, so it must be increasing the energy of this system. That would tend to increase the energy because we have positive external work. We could also look at the external work of the table on the block. Okay. So we know if it's going at constant velocity, whatever force going this way must be balanced this way. We talked about that with friction. So therefore, it's just this force of friction times delta x. For that work, F, F times delta x, but those are in the opposite direction, 180 degrees. So this one equals minus the magnitude of the force of friction times the magnitude of the delta x. And you can see that one comes out negative, and let's see, what that means is it's losing energy. If there's negative external work, that means the energy is going this way. So the finger is having some amount of external energy come in, and the table is causing some amount of external or of, uh, uh, the finger's having uh, energy come in through work, and the table is having energy go out through work. And you can see they're actually the same, right? They're both FP times delta X. Um, so let's see, let's then think about what does this mean? Well, physically what it means is, as we push the block, we aren't increasing the block's energy, right? There's no springs, we're not speeding it up. I'm being very careful to push it at a constant velocity, so its kinetic energy is the same. It's not getting any higher, so its gravitational energy is the same. And it's not pushing on a spring, so its, oops, its elastic potential is the same. Right? So that's what's happening when you think about the energy. If we want to write it down, we could say, well, the change um, in energy that's going through the system would be um, F, uh, we could call it P, P or F, they're the same thing, times delta x. Right. 
That's the change in energy that's flowing through. Right? This amount's going in and coming out. That's how much it's flowing through. And you could say, okay, well, we don't have delta x, but we do have v. Right? So what is v uh, equal to? Well, let's see. That's the constant velocity. It's an average velocity. It's delta x over delta t. So what we could do is replace delta x with, uh, um, uh, with uh, velocity times time. So we could say this is the force you're pushing with times the velocity times delta t. And then you could divide through by delta t, and you'd get delta e over delta t, and that is the flow of energy per unit time, how much energy per unit time. So we could say the power we're dealing with here is delta e over delta t, and in this case, it's just how hard you push times how fast you push it. So that's pretty easy to measure. We could actually sit here and measure if we wanted to the power in watts that we are dumping energy into the table. And remember, in this case, usually with friction, you end up creating internal energy in the table. In this case, it's just heat. We're heating the table as we slide the block across. Some of the heat also ends up in the block, but that's generating heat. Your body does this, so when you shiver, let's think, your body knows all about this. When you're cold, you know you shiver, right? You shiver because your tissues and muscles and bones is just a way to generate heat in your body and warm up your body a little bit. That's why you shiver when you're cold. And here you can see that the power that you generate heat, you know, the amount of uh, energy you make per unit time depends on the velocity. Well, that's why you shiver fast, right? You've never seen somebody cold and kind of shiver slow, right? When they're cold, you shiver as fast as your body can shiver because that's how you make the most heat. So if you ever see somebody, somebody shivering slow, just remind them that P is F times V.